wild card game on TBS. He's calling that game uh, in Arizona. First pitch, 8 Eastern time between the Rockies and Diamondbacks, and he joins us now here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Ron? I'm doing great, Rich. Thanks for having me. What would you think of last night's game? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I, I've never quite seen a first inning like that in a, in a postseason uh, game to have – not only uh, the the Twins jump out to that big lead, but for Santana to give it up straight away, um, a veteran pitcher, that was uh, quite surprising. So um, what do you think was the difference last night, Ron? Well, I, I, you know, obviously Robertson's work, um, you know, yeoman job of going uh, three and a third was huge. But I, I, I just think um, – you know, when you when you see the Yankees and their lineup, um, you know, we tend to just think of Judge and, and, and the rest of them. But, uh, you know, Gregorius has had a great year. The depth of their lineup is underrated, I believe, and uh, you saw it last night. So um, what what does it go through a young kid's mind? What was your first postseason start like when you, you watched Severino last night? You know, my first postseason night? start was against the Astros, and it was five innings of just uh, uh, utter uh, mediocrity. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> was it at Shea or in the Astrodome? It was at the Big Shea, and uh, – and I think what happens is that, and we're going to see this maybe tonight with John Gray, is that, you know, instead of brace, embracing all of this extra adrenaline that you have going, uh, sometimes you try to deny it. And, you know, I, 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 was, I found it interesting watching Severino pitch last night. We always think of the radar gun is that if it says a big number, that means the guy must be really good. But for Severino, hovers around 95. When I saw 97, 98 on his fastball, I was thinking, boy, He's uh, extremely pumped up, and it's going to be hard to kind of figure out how to throw his breaking ball, too. So uh, the radar gun can work in, in different ways. You know, most of the time it tells you the guy's throwing hard, but sometimes it tells you that maybe he's too amped up. Well, the gray that many people are familiar with coast-to-coast coast, might be sunny uh, yeah. more than John. Tell me about this kid that's pitching for the Rockies tonight and for those who might not know about him, his stuff and his ability to maybe get the Diamondbacks out and send them home. You know, that, that's, a, that's a great point, I think, uh, Rich, is that uh, most people don't know John Gray. Um, you know, he's a number one pick, always destined to be a number one kind of starter. Hasn't really hit that stride until the last part of last year, and then he was hurt at the beginning of this year, and then was outstanding down the stretch. Uh, you're going to see a guy who throws 95-plus, good breaking ball. If I could equate him to anyone that maybe people have seen a lot, uh, kind of a Garrett Cole uh, for the Pirates, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. You know, I mean, everyone always talks about no postseason experience. Well, you know, you don't get it until you're there. So um, he, he's a guy that uh, has pitched well against the Diamondbacks, 4-0 in his last five starts against them, and he's also pitched well at Chase Field, which is a real hitter's ballpark. So, um, you know, look for him to do a lot better than the starters last night in the wild card game. So, so I had Aaron Boone on yesterday's show, and he said if you could put the Indians on sodium pentothal, they'd be rooting for the Twins last night and would have been very happy, I guess, after what was a half inning of play. Put the Dodgers on sodium pentothal. Who are they rooting for tonight, do you think? They're rooting for the Rockies. Um you know, they have not uh, uh, played well either against the Rockies or the Diamondbacks. Those are two se uh, series they lost, considering they won 103 games. Um, but it's the Diamondbacks, I think. It's not only tonight with Zach Greinke, but Robbie Ray is another pitcher that no one knows about that had an unbelievable year. Um, uh, Patrick Corbin has come back to the uh, what he did in his uh, freshman season after going through Tommy John surgery. I think they're deeper in their starting pitching. I think their lineup has great depth. Um, the only issue, I think, for the Diamondbacks are, are maybe two things. One, their outfield defense is not great. It's good, but not great. And I think the bridge to get the ball to Archie Bradley, who had an amazing year, um, is, is not as deep as other teams, so like the Yankees. Well, I mean, and, and then I've got Ron Darling, who's calling with Ernie Johnson tonight um, as well. He's going to be calling Cubs-Nats uh, beginning on Friday on TBS, and he's calling tonight's wild card game. Colorado and Arizona on TBS 8 Eastern time. Um, Verlander starting for Houston. That's a big pickup, obviously, that happened in August. We're going to see Jose Quintana for the Cubs. Uh, last night, we saw Robertson and Canely for the Yankees in terms of a uh, trade deadline situation. Not many people talking about J.D. Martinez coast-to-coast -coast here, Ron. Yeah. And what, what they did, Arizona getting him from the Tigers, he has is, he is lit up this lineup. What do you think about this offense around him tonight in this well, ballgame? Yeah. You know, think about it, Rich. He's only been with the team two months, and he's going to be in the top five uh, MVP votes for the National League, I think. And, um, you know, what he's done, um, not only 
to protect um, Paul Goldschmidt. He's also, you know, he, he's the kind of guy that has power coast to coast. He can go to right center or left center off, off you. Um, he is just, uh, you know, one of the greatest pickups you've ever seen. I, I think he's the best pickup late by a team since Manny Ramirez joined the Dodgers in, I don't know, what year, 08, 09, or whatever. Um, and what he's done as far as his production and changing the team. And, you know, he was always hidden behind Miggy Cabrera with Detroit Tigers and others, you know, Upton or whatever. And here he's uh, uh, become the star, I think, that most people who watch the game every day knew he would. And my apologies to Brian Anderson. You're calling the game with him tonight, not Ernie Johnson. And then my kudos to you, Ron, for not correcting me. Thank you. Well, um, I I think you were right the first time. I'm calling it with Ernie Johnson. You are? Yes, I am. So you were right the first time. So whoever was in your ear, shame (laughs) on (laughs) you. Way to call him out, Ron. Okay. Okay, very good. So you are calling it with Ernie Johnson this evening. Yes. As well as the Cubs-Nats on Friday, correct? Yes. yes, yes. Pound the table for the Cubs here, Ron. Nobody's given them any chance, I don't think, to uh, to repeat based on what we saw for the Dodgers this regular season and obviously the Nats and them with their bullpen that they fortified uh, at the trade deadline. Pound the table for the Cubs here, Ron. Cubs were, Cubs were the best team down the stretch that I saw. Um, I, I did uh, their games – I don't know, maybe eight or nine of their games down the stretch. Um, they were the best team that I saw. The addition of Quintana, who I watched throw a shutout on a big game in Milwaukee. Um, a shutout is uh, nine innings of not giving up a run <laughs> because people don't see that very often anymore. Yes, nice. And, and he, he, was, uh, he was such a great addition to this ball club. Um, their starting pitching got in line in the second half. Hendricks uh, is back um, better than ever. Um, uh, I'd be really afraid of the Cubs. The Cubs have a, have a real chance uh, to go all the way through uh, because of how they played in the second half. And then uh, I got to ask you, one of the topics of discussion based on last night's wildcard game was the celebration that the Yankees had uh, in the clubhouse with champagne all over the place and goggles and and, and putting up the plastic on the uh, on the clubhouse walls to keep everything dry. A lot of folks were like, why are the Yankees celebrating a wild card win like it was the World Series, certainly when they got 27 in the case? What yeah, is, what's your stance um, on that, Ron? You know, I, I think this is a uh, – we're old guys, and uh, this is millennial age, and uh, everybody gets a trophy, and everybody wants to celebrate whatever. I, I'm not against it. Um, I would think, though, that for – most ball clubs, I think it's really fun to put the goggles on and the champagne and all that stuff. But really, the prize is that at some point um, you've got to win, you know, 11 games. And uh, um, I, I, I think if I were on a team, I would like it to be celebrated less. But I played on a team. Um, uh, the 86 Mets that probably would have celebrated more than anyone. So I can never <laughs> accuse anyone. Who would have led it? Who would have led it, Ron? Who would have led that celebration? Uh, the celebration, I think, would have been led by Hernandez and Dykstra and th- uh, those guys. I think they would have been uh, Keith, uh, front and center. Keith would have been front and center with the, with the, with the champagne. Huh? I mean, what would David Johnson have said? Uh, David David Johnson would have been in the background. Gary Carter would have been out in front, uh, (laughs) the late great. (laughs) See, uh, it's interesting, man. It's interesting you brought up the trophy culture because I said that too in the first hour. I'm going back and forth that these are kids in the Yankees uh, clubhouse that not many people gave a shot to actually coalesce like they did. And you want to act like you've been there before. They haven't been there before. Most of them in that clubhouse have not been there before. But then there is the trophy culture where everybody gets an orange wedge these days in youth sports, Ron. And the- yeah, well, you have to remember also last year at this time we probably had some discussions that the Yankees were two or three years away from being a contending ball club. And uh, what they have done there in such a quick time. Now, listen, uh, no one knew that Aaron Judge was going to turn into Babe Ruth uh, for the summer. But uh, uh, I mean, what they've done in a year's time when most people thought after trading Miller and Chapman to get some – help in the minor leagues that they were going to turn into the team they have and uh, they're really scary and I'm, sh- I'm sure the Indians uh, know that. Before I let you go Ron um, back closer to home with the Mets are they going to turn to an, one of your old teammates to be the new manager? Do you think I don't that- know if they're going to turn to one of the old teammates I, I think uh, it, in my opinion they're going to pick someone who has the ability to not only manage on the field but also the deal with the analytics uh, that the Mets uh, and most ball clubs uh, use right now. So I think it'll be a more of a new wave kind of guy. Uh, really? Yeah. So what do you think the direction of the team is right now? The current um, state of the Mets of the, right now. 
Well, I, I, I think we're talking about the Yankees uh, and how quick of a rebound they had. If the Mets get the kind of pitching that everyone thinks they're supposed to get from uh, from the guys that have the talent that they have, um, I think they could have a quick fix too. So uh, hopefully that'll happen because they're too talented uh, with their pitching uh, for it not to work at some point. If I get, I'm going to give you a choice. Choose one of the two to fill, finish the sentence. Okay. Matt Harvey is ready to rebound, be toast in New York. Not the toast of New York, toast in New York. I, I am always the eternal optimist, especially when it comes to young pitching, because I, I had my own um, pratfalls in the beginning of my career, uh, ready to rebound, and I think he's going to be, for the second time, the comeback player of the year. Okay. Ron, I'm looking forward to your call with Ernie Johnson tonight. All right, thanks. On TBS, and we'll Bye, chat down the line. You got it. It's Ron Darling. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. Isn't it amazing you can download an app with your thumbprint? You should download our app with your thumbprint. 